Okay, thank you, Zaid. So, uh, yeah, I'll be talking about uh, some recent new results and analysis for the conditional gradient or Frank Wolf method. Uh, so, this is joint work with uh, my advisor, Rob, who spoke earlier. So, just uh, to set up things here, this is my sort of notation. Uh, be looking at uh, convex optimization in uh, maximization form. So, um, so we're maximizing a, a concave function, which is differentiable, uh, and Q is a convex complex set that we can easily solve linear optimization on. Uh, so this is just sort of an outline of the method that I think everyone's familiar with by now. Um, basically, we compute a gradient, solve a, a, a linear optimization problem that maximizes the linearization at our current point, uh, and then we, we take a step towards that, uh, towards that um, extreme point. And, but actually, what I want to highlight here is um, something kind of non-standard, which is that we're sort of explicitly keeping track of some information at each iteration, uh, namely this BKW, which is an upper bound on the, on the optimal objective function uh, value, and this GK, which we call the wolf gap, which is sort of like a, a duality gap, but with a kind of special structure. Um, so actually, just to speak a little bit more about these bounds, right? So um, this, this upper bound that we get at every iteration is just coming from concavity of the function. Uh, and sort of at every iteration, we're getting an upper bound. So uh, we can keep updating these to get better and better upper bounds. Uh, we can also sometimes compute other upper bounds through duality structure, um, whatever, depending on, on the problem. Uh, the wolf gap is um, basically you take your current upper bound, so not the best one, but actually the one you got from the linearization at your current iteration, and you subtract the, uh, the objective function at the current iterate. So this is sort of like a, a duality gap, but it's not just a generic duality gap, right? Because it actually, um, actually the, the upper bound is, is, is really related to the uh, h of lambda k very explicitly. And actually, this uh, special relationship is, is exploited in a number of applications um, by a number of people. Uh, so sort of the first kind of result in our paper is uh, some sort of a mix of results on just different step sizes. Uh, so we've got kind of four step sizes here, uh, the sort of well-studied 2 over i plus 2 step size, a simple averaging step size, which has the property that uh, after, after k iterations, your, your current point is the the simple average of all the previous extreme points you've seen, and a constant step size, and sort of a constant step size that's optimized, given that you know you want to run for k iterations ahead of time. And then in these other two columns, we just have uh, the sort of bounds that you see for the, for the objective function gap, which is just the, the best upper bound minus the, the current point, and the, the wolf gap, so the best wolf gap you've seen. So sort of the well-studied thing gets the, the optimal kind of 1 over k rate. The other things get some log k over k rates. And the c constant is just the, the curvature constant. Uh, so actually, all of these results are, um, are really just uh, specific instantiations of, of uh, a more general theorem uh, that basically characterizes what the gap looks like uh, for an arbitrary choice of step size. And actually, it depends kind of on this uh, alpha and beta sequences that I define here, which are related to the connections between dual averaging and Frank Wolf that Rob spoke about earlier. And we have a similar uh, technical theorem, we call it for the, the Wolf gap sequence, which is just kind of a, a slight modification of the previous theorem. OK, so uh, now I want to jump gears a little bit and talk about a slightly different topic related, uh, which is sort of a, adapting Frank Wolf to a warm start analysis. So uh, to kind of motivate this, OK, to motivate this, right, um, so if we recall the well-studied step size sequence, right, and uh, it's associated computational guarantee, it's something like 2 times the curvature over k. So this has kind of got a, a peculiar property that, that other first-order methods don't have, which is that there's no dependence uh, in this, on that right-hand side, bound on the distance to the optimal solution, or the uh, distance could be measured, I mean, in terms of uh, norm or uh, objective function gap between your, your starting point and the optimal solution. Right? So like proximal methods like uh, you know, uh, projected gradient, they kind of have a dependence on some distance from your initial point to the optimal solution. Uh, so you know, if we're really far from the optimal solution when we start, that, that's good. Like, who cares? Right? But on the other hand, if we're moderately close, then 
this is not really a good property. So, uh, so what we look at is how to adapt Frank Wolf to, uh, to this setting where actually maybe we're, we're starting at a, a nice point. And so how does this work? Right, well, if you remember what the, the first iteration of Frank Wolf looks like, right? So we're starting at an initial point lambda 1 here and uh, an initial upper bound b0. Then we, we compute the, the uh, extreme point that, that maximizes the linearization and we update the upper bound, right? And then for some estimate of the curvature constant, it could be you know the curvature constant exactly or you just estimate it, right? Then we use the step size sequence, which looks like the, the standard 2 over i plus 2 step size sequence, but now it's actually 2 over this ratio of uh, 2c over the gap plus i plus 1. So you can think about this as if we're restarting the 2 over i plus 2 step size uh, after, you know, if we, if we had actually been running the, the Frank Wolf algorithm for 2c1 over, over b1 minus h lambda 1 iterations already. Um, I mean, so can you always do line search, right? I mean, so if you use the, the quadratic step size, is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, that actually has similar results to this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, so anyway, so the guarantee that we get for the uh, for this warm started step size is uh, basically an analogous guarantee to the um, to the two over i plus two step size, but again with the warm start property that now this denominator has this ratio plus k, and um, so it's kind of also as if we had already been running for this certain number of iterations. Uh, so now let, let, let's talk about actually right this this warm start kind of step size you know. Uh, we sort of have the, it sort of has the idea that you, you start at a good point, but then you continue on with the 2 over i plus 2. But maybe actually as you're running, you do better and better, and you're kind of throwing away information by, by continuing with the 2 over i plus 2 step size. Right? So how do we adapt this in a dynamic way? Right? So, um, so the way to do that, right, uh, if we consider you know, an iteration of, of the algorithm, we're at some point lambda k. Uh, we've got an upper bound bk minus 1 from the previous iteration and an estimate of the curvature from the previous iteration. And what we want to do is we want to do a step size that looks like 2 over this ratio that we saw before, now updated right, with the new upper bound bk and some new estimate ck uh, plus 2. And so this is kind of like the first step in the 2 over i plus 2 step size. So let's now discuss how we compute this curvature constant. Uh, so what we need is that it satisfies this, this inequality, basically. So, uh, which is sort of the definition of the curvature constant, right? So what we do is we first test the, the previous estimate. If that works, we're good to go. Uh, otherwise, we can do some kind of doubling strategy, or if we have a quadratic function, you can, you can determine it analytically, but of course, if you have quadratic, you can just do a line search anyways. Um, and of course, it'll always hold with the doubling strategy that uh, our estimate is, is less than uh, the max of the, the initial estimate and uh, twice times the, the true curvature constant. Okay, so this is just uh, a complete description of, of everything I just described, the, uh, the method with the dynamic step sizes, and this is the guarantee that we get. So the guarantee looks like uh, we've got this kind of this expression that's looking at, um, basically if you look inside this min here, you get something that looks like the, the result for the warm start. Right, which says 2 over the curvature estimate divided by uh, the ratio plus k minus l. Right? But what is that saying? Right? We're taking the min over all these warm starts. So it's like you did a warm start starting at iteration l, uh, but it's the min over all previous iterations. So it's like you got the best possible warm start. And it's kind of natural that we would get something like this here. And so that, uh, that concludes this part of the talk uh, about the warm start analysis. Uh, so the final piece I'll talk about here is just sort of generalization of our, our main results to uh, the case of approximate computations. So kind of unsurprisingly, when you do, uh, you know, you need to solve the, the subproblems to an absolute accuracy of delta, or if the gradient is computed in some, uh, uh, some precise way, uh, we call it a delta oracle introduced by Dapremont, 
then uh, basically our main theorem just uh, all we do, all that happens to it is that you add a, an extra term that's just two plus delta. So the errors do not accumulate, and these other terms are exactly the same as before. So we can specify those to, to precise rates for specific choices of the step size sequences. Um, and also, there's a, it's natural to just extend this to the case where the delta k's are varying, uh, and also for the, the wolf gaps as well. And then so finally, we also uh, briefly consider the idea of using a delta L oracle, which is sort of a, a less restrictive version of, of approximate gradient computations. Uh, but there, actually, you know, we observed kind of an interesting property with the Frank-Wolf method, which is that the errors accumulate for basically any choice of step size sequence. And um, so this is like a negative result, but actually it kind of shed some light on, on the pros and cons of different first order methods, right? So if you kind of think about, uh, think about the world where you can do projections and, and linear optimization, right? Then um, basically what the results of, of our paper and also the, um, this paper on delta L oracles by uh, Devalder, Nesterov, and uh, uh, Francois Lanier is that, um, so basically, uh, we see that, that basically out of three methods, right, the conditional gradient method, the classical kind of projected gradient method, and the accelerated gradient method, each one has its own kind of uh, advantage, right? Uh, the accelerated method is good when uh, you can compute gradients exactly and do projections. Um, with uh, approximate computations, the accelerated and, and Frank-Wolf are no longer too good, but the classical gradient method is good. Uh, but on the other hand, Frank-Wolf and the conditional gradient, you get some special structure of the iterates that you know, low rank, sparsity, that kind of thing. Uh, so really no method is, is completely dominated by someone else. And so that concludes uh, my talk, so thank you. question about the approximate oracle. So I think it's nice if the oracle is very weak. Can you still work with it? And what do you think, uh, if you don't know anything about the quality of the oracle, could you check what you got from it is good enough? Or so that if not, you could uh, ask for more computation? Or is there any uh, So working with the, the weaker assumptions of the delta L oracle or the... If, uh, if you don't know how good the oracle is, but you just keep asking it, and then hopefully it will answer, give a better answer, then is it enough to get a guarantee for the rate, maybe? Can you check the quality? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure, actually, if... I have to think about that some more, but that's interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. So I'm not so sure either. show was that you, right, you can have different delta i's in each iteration. Okay, this is actually in our paper. So one kind of, right, I think as you said, you can imagine a situation where you run your oracle. You have your oracle, your oracle should do something like the following, which is you, you, give, it a, you give it a whatever, and then it solves, but it's got to come back to you with some back on its accuracy. And then you can say, okay, yeah, give me more digits, or give me more time, or give me more work, I need more. But I'm, I'm, not, sure, I'm not sure if I'm restating the obvious, in a sense, as in terms of a response to your question. should be like the sum of the deltas for each call the author. In, so which uh, model here? If you have a delta k, which depends on k. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you replace it by the sum of the deltas, but then divide it by, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a convex hull of the, yeah, convex combination of the, Right, in a, for an accelerated method. Yeah, it's, so, yeah. So again, this is in this paper by George Lahn. So he shows if you're going to use, say, this, the 2 over k plus 2 step size rule, okay, then the, the, the delta k that you need in each iteration is on that. You can do it with 
would be either the square root or the square proportional to that step size. <coughs> and, um, and that squares with, with, with uh, so the, the, yeah, the so ways it, to do this that takes a bit. So if delta k was. Take advantage yeah. of the fact that at early iterations, you can get away with less accuracy. Yeah. yeah. Like one over k is enough for the accuracy per iteration. Yeah. So could you comment on your uh, gaps, uh, gap uh, guarantees? The which which ones? The talk. So, so from those gap guarantees, you this get certificates or? for your, the solution of your problem. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, you so comment uh, on that? which guarantees? The wolf gap? Yes. Or, yes. Um, so what was your question? So do you get accuracy certificates for that, for your algorithm? Uh, yeah. So the accuracy certificates are just the gaps, right? Yes, That's, exactly. Yeah. 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 So. so Oh, right. So, yeah, the algorithm naturally yeah, generates this. Yeah. So, yeah. so your certificates go at the same rate as your algorithm? Uh, the objective one. Yeah, so the certificates go basically at the same rate. Uh, it depends on the, the step size here, but if you see, basically it's always, so for the well-studied thing, it's, it's been known already that it's 1 over k. Yes. Right? And for the others, it's, it's log k uh, over k. And basically the general result, um, it looks something like this, but it basically this just says as long as your alphas are not are not decreasing too quickly, then you can say something uh, also about the gaps. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks.